الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So first of all, mobiles are not allowed. <laughs> Please turn off your mobiles or take it away, and let's focus together. Mashallah. You put distance between you and mobile. This is very good. Okay. So. Just from here, it can be more. Bismillah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, inshallah, we we'll start our workshop. What is the topic of our workshop? You know, the title of our camp is Leave a Legacy. Who knows what is legacy? English. Yeah. Huh? I mean, like, something that's a legend, something that's, like, very good. Yes. Like, something very important. Yes. Uh, something like a prophecy. Yes, similar to that also. Yeah. Yes, very good. Qu very close meanings. Yes. It's like a wealth or it's like something very precious. When you leave it, it benefits, benefits people, right? Okay. So how every one of us, during his life, he can leave something. It will be like a legacy. Not like this. Legacy. <laughs> Okay, how we can do that? This is our talk today. And you know, many people, they think to change the ummah, to change the direction of the history that needs a lot of people, or a prophet, or a messenger. But the question is, is it possible that one normal person, only one, can make big change and big impact in the Ummah? Yes. 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 Only one? Yes. yes. Did yes. it happen? Yes, correct. Did it happen before? Yeah. Yes. Can you give me examples? Okay. Give me examples. Okay, Salman. Okay, this is Prophet Muhammad, of course. Okay. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is definitely because he is a prophet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want something else. Imam Ahmed. Yeah. Who said Imam Ahmed? Uh, me. Okay, well, mashallah. Imam Ahmed, of course, that is a great Imam. But what did he do? He was a great scholar. Yes, he was a great scholar. Africa. Africa? Fiqh, Fiqh. Fiqh, yes. He established one school of Fiqh. Great, yes, Salman. Hazrat Umar. Umar ibn Khattab. What did he do? Uh, he helps the Omar ibn Khattab huh? expand Islam. He conveyed Con the message. Islam. And Islam. Where, where, how was the kingdom of Omar ibn Khattab? Very big. <laughs> From where to where? Omar? East to west. East to west. Not so, <laughs> but it reached like almost near China and yes. from the west. West is Maghreb. Yes. Portugal. Sahabas of the Prophet. Sahaba of the Prophet Of course, all of them, one of them. This is great, Abu Raq, you know. The Tabi'een, who are Tabi'een? The generation came after the Sahaba, right? They were saying, if only one Sahabi in our army, we will win and we will have victory. Only one Sahabi. Just he is existing with us, he will make big change. Subhanallah, one person. Only one Sahabi is enough to have victory. Not because he is so powerful, because of his Iman. Iman. Okay. Now, my dear brothers, quickly. I will give you one example. And this example always impressed me too much. We go back in the history 
and we go deep in the desert of Morocco. 450s around this time, like after 400 years from the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu There was a man in Mauritania. You know, Mauritania is below Morocco. In North Africa, you know, Africa is like this. Okay? So, here is Morocco, the last one, and below it is Mauritania. There was a man, righteous man. This righteous man, he found people around him, Muslims, but drinking alcohol. Muslims, but they are doing zina. Till a level that they are doing zina with neighbors. A man will give his wife to his neighbor and he, a'udhu billah. Till that level, everywhere munkar fawahish. So, this sheikh was called Sheikh Yahya ibn Umar al-Judali. Sheikh, I hope you are writing down. I gave you notes to write down, okay? Sheikh Yahya al-Judali, okay? Yeah, beside you, okay? You will find notes and pens. Okay. This sheikh, he didn't know what to do. He doesn't have knowledge. And he was so disappointed from that Muslims are very far from Allah. What did he do? He said, I will go to Morocco and I will seek a good scholar and I will seek the, the, their help to come to return Muslims to their origin. So he traveled from Mauritania up to the north to Morocco. Okay? And there he was asking people, I have this problem. What can I do? They told him there is a great scholar called a Sheikh. Please memorize this name. A Sheikh Abdullah Ibn Yaseen. Okay? Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen. He was a great scholar. And he had a lot of students. And he had great knowledge of fiqh. They told him this, blah, 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 blah. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen was living in one of the top cities in the world at that time. City on the sea. And very developed and very rich and very comfortable life. Like the Gulf area now. MashaAllah, very comfortable life. And he decided, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen, decided to leave everything and go deep in the desert in the poor area of Mauritania to call people to Allah, to return them to back to their deen. So, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen went with this Sheikh Yahya. And when they reached Mauritania, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen started to make da'wah. Started to join good and forbid evil. What was the reaction of people? What do you think? This is great school. What was the reaction? Huh? Hate him. Refused. People, they didn't like him. Why they didn't like him? Because people, their heart full of desires. They don't want someone to say, don't do. It's wrong. They don't want this. They want free, ultimate freedom. So after some time, they threatened him. You should keep silent. I'm actually a little confused. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yasin go from the Mauritania to... No, from Morocco to Mauritania. He was in Morocco, the developed place. Morocco to Mauritania? Yes. And Sheikh Yahya go... Maybe Mauritania is, is here, but anyhow. No, no, here, it's Sahaka. It's Okay, anyhow. Yes. Yes, Sheikh Yahya was the one who didn't know what to do. Doesn't have knowledge, but good person. 
So Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yasin, when he started his da'wah, moreover, moreover, people are rejecting until they threaten him. If you didn't stop, we are going to harm you. He continued. After that, what happened? You know what happened in Abu Raq? After that, people rejected him until they kicked him outside Mauritania. They kicked him outside the country. Imagine a great scholar, rich, comfortable life. He has his students teaching knowledge every day. Everything is easy and he is pleasing Allah. He's not far from Allah. He's doing a great job in, in Morocco. But he left all that, all that for what? To convey the message of Allah for a needy place. He left all his comfortable life. And what did he find? He found people, everyone is agreeing and accepting. Everyone is fighting him. What did he say? May Allah curse you. And he went back to Morocco? No. Sheikh was shocked. Are there Muslims like this? Really? After they kicked him out and he, his life was in danger, they wanted to kill him. He settled on the borders. He put a tent. One person, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yassim. He put a tent. And he sent letters to four or five youth from those who were interested to follow him, but they were afraid from their families. He sent letters. I am in that place, please come. These youth, they went to Sheikh. There were how many? Five. Five persons. They came to Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yassin. He started to make da'wah. This youth, mashallah, they tasted the taste of iman in their heart, coming closer to Allah. They felt they were not living before this life before. So after that, what did they do? Ya Salman, they called their friends in Morocco. They said, come, come, come. Here we have great sheikh. Here we tasted the iman. Here we found our real life. In Morocco? No, border of Morocco. borders of Morocco. In the, in the desert. Then the five brought another five they became ten. ten and by time the ten became twenty hundred mashallah all these the youth are coming their hearts are willing to follow the iman and then sheikh is teaching them the knowledge the iman the ibadah and how to be independent to hunt the animals to eat from their own hands not to ask others. Go and hunt and bring our food by ourselves. So they were strong, believers, independent. They can survive in the wild. Until this number, it was somehow good. Few days it reached 1,000 plus. 1,000 Muslims as real Muslims. Good youth, and connected to Allah, they have good skills to survive, they have good ibadah, proper understanding of the deen, comprehensive understanding of the deen, practical understanding of the deen. After that, what happened? After that, imagine in that time in 450s Hijri, of course, 1,000 person, you know, it's a strong tribe. No one can attack easily. Now 1,000. They can defend themselves. And that was the reality. They could defend themselves. They could protect themselves. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yasin, slowly, slowly, this number started to grow until it reached 10,000. Allahu Akbar. 10,000. It's like a village. Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yassin created by? One. One person. One. Uh, how it started by only? Abdullah. Only one. one. They became one complete village as real believers. 
strong believers. No one now can attack them. Few days ago, they were just going to kill him and all the good people. Now, alhamdulillah. After that, subhanallah, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen, he tasted the da'wah. He didn't want to go back to Morocco. Khalas. I don't want to go back to the developed place and technology, comfortable place. I tasted the da'wah now. Sheikh Abdullah started to go for da'wah in Africa, go down and expand more. Now there are 10,000 until they reached 12,000 and the Prophet ﷺ said 12,000 will not be defeated because of number. 12,000 strong. خلاص. Alhamdulillah, people are accepting Islam every day more and more and more. Every day. Until when was this year? Which year? Four hundred fifties in Hijra, like four hundred sixty around this. And Sheikh Abdullah called it. Now it became actually in his time it was strong and growing fast from one person until it reached this number in very short time. After that, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen. How many months did it take him to reach 12,000? Like one year to two years, not more than that. Very short time. After that, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yaseen became so sick. He died And he died. And his assistant became the responsible. And please memorize this name. Sheikh Abu Bakr. Yeah. Ibn. Omar Al-Lamtuni Sheikh Abu Bakr ibn Omar Al-Lamtuni This is a great name in Islam Allah. A great name in the history Sheikh Abu Bakr ibn Omar Al-Lamtuni He Most of the Countries of Africa In the south He is the one to The first one to make fatah for these countries And spread Islam Sheikh Abu Bakr ibn Omar Al-Lamtuni most of the countries of Africa, he is the one to start to reach there and spread Islam. This Sheikh. Halas, these people, they tasted. This life is amazing. This is the best life, if you could leave it. And Sheikh Abu Bakr and Umar al-Lamtuni, mashallah, every day, going to a new country, to a new place, to a new tribe, facing a lot of hardships. But by conveying the message of Allah and seeing people accepting the call of Allah, they are relieved from any other hardships. Until quickly, as not to take long time, Sheikh Abu Bakr ibn Umar al-Lamtuni, you know how many person accepted Islam with him? More than 100,000. Allahu Akbar. Great true men. Sheikh Abu Bakr. After that, Sheikh Abu, Abu Bakr ibn Umar al-Lamtuni became old and passed away. A great name in the history. All of you should remember, and this name is one of the best. Yusuf ibn Tashfin, mashallah. Yusuf ibn Tashfin. This was the person came after Sheikh Abu Bakr ibn Umar al Lamtuni. Sheikh Yusuf ibn Tashfin, unbelievable person, sacrificing in a way, subhanAllah al Azim. They were called Dawlat al Murabitin. Dawla is what? It's a country. Al Murabitin. So please search about this in the history and read about it. Al Murabitin. It became a very strong state in the history. Started by one person. At that time, Europe, Spain, Al Andalus. What was happening in Andalus? Who knows Al Andalus? Andalus was the Islamic ruling where? Spain. In Spain. Yes, I remember. Very good, Aburak. Then, Al Andalus. 
Unfortunately, after some time, the rulers and the people, they were falling into desires and leaving the Islamic teachings, becoming far from Allah. Every youth, every boy is searching for girlfriend. Everyone just leaving the prayers, falling into haram. Then, at that time, the Christians, they defeated them very strongly. And they reached one place, the f one of the final two cities. Khalas, they took all the, they just divided them into 22 cities, Al Andalus. And take this, take this, take this, take this. Until the end, these two cities, they asked the support of, they asked the support from Sheikh Yusuf ibn Tashfin, Dawlat al Murabatin, please come help us. We are dying. We are being invaded. And we are being totally destroyed. Sheikh Yusuf ibn Tashfin went out to help them. So Dawlat al-Murabitin was very busy here in Africa to spread the correct message. Sheikh Yusuf ibn Tashfin, during this, he received a letter from Europe, from Spain. He took just 1,000 person. And he was 77 or 76 years old. He took 1,000 persons to go and help Muslims in Spain, Andalus. Just on his way, people seeing the warriors going, the 1,000, until they reach there, this per person is motivated. And this person is joining. And that one is saying, I will not miss this chance. I will join you to help Islam. When they reached 1,000, they reached there in Spain, more than 10,000. And they had one of the great battles in Islam, battle of Az-Zalaqa. You know, Az-Zalaqa in, in, in Arabic means slippery. Why it was called the slip, battle of slippery? Because of the huge blood was there, because of people being killed. So, Sheikh Yusuf ibn Tashfin, until end of his life, almost 78 years, he was helping Islam in a way that we are now in our 30s, we cannot. They changed the history. These people really, these three names, starting by their great Sheikh Abdullah ibn Yasin, Abu Bakr ibn Umar al Lamtuni, Yusuf ibn Tashfin, they changed the history in Africa and Europe. Started by how many person? One. One. You can do something or not? Yes. Wallah, you can do. Yes. You can do. But how to do, we listen from Sheikh Saad about the connection or the qualifications or the characteristics of a da'i to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then after that we will open the teams, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Are you okay? Tired enough? Or enjoying? Actually after the lecture of Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad Ismail, I should not speak, we should not say anything. But just as, this, as a sharing session. Okay, brother uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is a sharing session. We, myself, I came here to learn from you and to share some ideas with you, okay? So after you hear about this story of these three important person, I want to ask you one question. From where he brought this idea to leave his comfort place to move to Mauritania? What motiva motivated him to do that? Yeah, his iman, right? All agree, right? His iman. Is it a normal iman? No, it's a so strong iman. iman. Strong only? Believe. Or very, very strong iman? Yeah. Huh? Now we are coming from Sabor to here. We are looking for the most comfortable place to stay in, right? <laughs> Even we are enjoying. But we are trying to find the best place, the best room, the best bed, you know? 
but he moved from Morocco to the thing moved, motivated him only Iman. And of course Iman, he brought that Iman from, from where? Allah. Yes, from Quran and Sunnah. From the book of Allah and Sunnah. From the book of Allah, we have a lot of stories. I will not go deep because Brother Sheikh Muhammad, he already explained enough. I want to speak about most of them, but there is no time. So we have a lot of stories. Two of them, Mu'minu Al Yaseen, you know this, this name before? Surah Yaseen, oh, we all know Surah Yaseen, right? Yes. There is one story, one important story in the Surah Yaseen, do you know? Huh? You know the story? Allah said subhanahu wa ta'ala, quickly, the story quickly. Allah said subhanahu wa ta'ala, three prophets. Okay? And their people. And most of the people disbelieved. They rejected the, the, the iman. They rejected to come to, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from here starts the story. Allah said, وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ قَالَ What does that mean? قَالَ One from very far, from other city, from different city than... Okay, for example, the prophet's from Sabora and he's from this place. He went to support this prophet. He came directly from that place to just say one word. Oh people, follow the prophets. It was only one person, okay? And this is the word that he said. And the Quran records this word. Ya qawmi ittabi'u al-musaleen. Ittabi'u man la yas'alukum ajran wa hum muhtadun. Follow those who are just, they are, they are not, they are calling to Allah, the creator, the maker. Okay? And they did not ask, never ask you for money. Just they are calling you to go to paradise, right? So, اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرًا وهم مهتدون. And he start to say, why not? I worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I am worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And he start to ask them to, huh? Come to Allah and follow the prophets. What they did with him? Killed him. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala record that in the Quran Al Karim. He mentioned that in the Quran Al Karim in the same surah. قال يا قوم اتبعوا المسلمين اتبعوا ما لا اسالكم اجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا اعبد الذي فطرني واليه ترجعون اتخذ من دونه الهه اني اذا اني امنت بربكم and here is the last word he said Allah says after that قيل يا قوم قيل ادخل الجنه means that they killed him already and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take him to what he did this man Alone to support the Prophet against this a lot of people. From this story and from other stories, like also Mu'minu Ali Fir'aun, same also similar like this story. When you recite Al Quran Al Kareem, this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you understand the lessons behind that, and we have a strong iman, and when you read these people, they changed their life to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they did a great offer. When you read about the Sahaba, you will find some people like, you read it already? Abdullah ibn Yaseen. Okay? Okay. So, number one, remember this because we will come again to this point. Iman. Okay? Do we have example in our life now like these people? I will tell you about three of them quickly. I was living in Malaysia. Okay? I met many people there. I was working in uh, 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 association just to serve the new Muslim. I used to move from association to another to to see and to give a, a small lecture or something like that. One of them it was in Kuala Lumpur, and the manager for this association, one lady, her name Hawa. Okay. I went to this association and and said they asked me the first I don't know her I don't know anything about they asked just give a lecture a little bit with a student something like that I give one second and after that she invited me and her husband to one place and she start to explain I ask her usually I ask this question how you embrace Islam how you find Islam something like that she said okay you want to know about my story I said yes please it's important for me she said okay do you have a time I said yes I have a time please go ahead she start to tell her story. It was amazing, okay? I cried from my heart before my eyes. How she left the worldly life, everything beautiful in this life, just to live this life to serve Allah religion. Listen to this. This woman was a young girl, very beautiful. She said, she is explaining, I'm not explaining. She's saying, I was beautiful, and she, her work like a model. You know model? Model? Yeah. 
those who are uh, filming in TV, advertisement, all of that, because she is very beautiful and she has a lot of money. She said, I'm earning a day, maybe 1,000 US dollar in that time. And not only that, she was a daughter of El Asis is mobile English. Priest. 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 She Christian, yeah, Christian uh, priest. priest. Okay. <laughs> she said, I used to memorize the Bible. Bible. And I'm the one who used to recite it in the church. See? And subhanAllah, suddenly she heard Adhan in her place. And this is what changed her life. She was, she was living in Malaysia and he heard the Azan in the TV. And she said, since that time, when the Azan come, I switch on the TV, I, I listen. Her father came and he said, oh, why you are listening and something like that. So she did not listen to him. Now she starts her journey. I'm just, just making the story quickly. She, she started his journey to find Islam until she find one good sheikh and he directed her to Islam. And she, alhamdulillah, she become a Muslim. And since that time, she moved completely from this town and left her house and everything, and she married that man, a Muslim man. Okay. She went through a lot of difficulties. In the end, I'm just, as again, I'm just making the story short. She said, I get rid from all haram money and start business, and she make this business, all this business, just to serve Allah's religion, and start to build this building to make a situation to uh, call for Allah's religion. And she said, one of the uh, yani, things that she just explained, she said, I had seven children, seven children, daughters and boys and girls. No one of them has normal life. The first, uh, he has a problem in his, his mental problems. The second, she has a, a hole in her heart. She explained about everyone. I said, said subhanAllah, she, now she will say, I, I hate Islam because, yeah, I believe. She said, no. But after every salah, every, I say, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took everything from me but guided me to Islam. Here I start to cry, I try to control myself. She's just new, a Muslim, and she's saying that. We are just when we, something, our hand broke or something, why me? Why Allah tells me everyone is okay, is life? But she, all of her money serving Islam, her children, seven of them, she running everywhere, hospital, every hospital, no one are okay, but she's still saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The result of that work, a lot of Muslim, I see with my eyes one of them, one girl, two years, she, they are working with her for two years, and they invited her to this association just to teach her Islam. In that time, I was there. She told me this girl, she's not Muslim, but she wants to listen. SubhanAllah, yani, of course, it's not for me, but from Allah completely. I give a little bit of speech with uh, little words, and in the end, I asked her, do you have any question about Islam? She said, yes, I have one question. She asked one question, and then she said, now I want to say la ilaha illallah. Why I'm telling that? Not because of me. Completely, this is not my work. She, this is her work. But just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me the effort what she did. This is not the day. Every few days they have new Muslim. This is one lady. Only one lady. She did? Yes, she did. Another lady, but I will skip this one, <laughs> to move to another one here in this country. Another one, actually, uh, he inspired me too much. His story yani, uh, uh, yani affected me too much. This man, he was a sensei in his university, and his, his life very nice, alhamdulillah. He came here, he worked, uh, also in a very good company. And subhanAllah, and a good opportunity to serve Islam open to him. He left everything, this whole life, to move to work in that Islamic school as a manager. Our brother, <laughs> Abdul Rashid. <laughs> wallahi, <laughs> wallahi, brother Abdul Rashid, yeah. This is also one of a great example. Yes, brother Abdul Rashid, maybe I, I just met him a few times in my life, but from his story, he just, I, subhanAllah, if anyone just was thinking about worldly life, worldly aspects, he will never take this action. But because of Iman, because He's believed that this religion need more people, more than just talking, need to take action. He left that to work. Uh, I really appreciate that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. I, I'm just, I'm not exposing your intention, not saying anything. But this is as a real example. Because 
Sheikh Muhammad, he speak about someone 1,000 years ago. But alhamdulillah, we have in our life. So we, our, ourselves, we can change. We can do change. We can do. We can do it. But you must have these qualities. This is what we are going to speak about, inshallah, quickly. So let me ask you this question. What's the qualities all of these people has? Can you, we need only three things. Can you write it and tell me? Yes, okay, please go ahead. Very, very strong iman. Iman, number one. Okay, what else? And uh, motivation. Okay. Motivation comes from iman, right? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Brave. What's this? Brave. Ali? Huh? Brave. 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 Brave, okay. Courage. 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 Very good. Ikhlas. 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 This is number two. ممكن نكتب بالا تندور لأنه هم ذا لحنا عزيزين. الإيمان. And إخلاص. What else? صبر. الصبر. الصبر. Mission right. ما شاء الله. الصبر. What else? Intention. Okay, and it come from here also, intention. And yeah, all of this is okay. But we'll take three of them to focus. Yes. A taqwa comes from Iman also. Taqwa, okay. A taqwa uh, yani is a result of Iman, right? Yes. What else? Huh? Pureness, heart, more. What do you say? Yes, he has a good heart. Iman is everybody. No, yeah, Iman is not everybody. Iman is not everybody. And let me tell you something about Iman. Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah An-Nisa, وَلَنْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَبِيلًا وَلَنْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ سَبِيلًا Allah will never allow the disbeliever to have overcome over the believer. The believer, he did not say Muslimin. So, what is the recent or current situation now? Right? Who controlling the world? Who controlling the Muslimin? Right? Who controlling the Muslim countries? Yuhud. Just say, don't be shy. Yuhud. Okay. If they are believers, uh, Subhanallah, Allah will never allow the, uh, them to, to control them. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, when He promised, right? But we are not, alhamdulillah, we now 1.7 billion almost Muslim around the world, but وَلَيْسَتْ كَلِمَتُهُمُ الْعُلِيَةِ Okay, they are not controlling even themselves because of many things. Are you ready to change? Are you ready to be the change? Huh? Right or yes or no? <laughs> so that's, that's why we are here today. This is the real intention why we are here. We want to uh, have the strong iman, we want to have an intention. We go from here, inshallah, to change the world. Can we do it? Yes, you can, inshallah. Inshallah, with the strong iman, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you said iman, ikhlas, sabr, niyyah. What else? There is one important thing. Yes? Like uh, thinking about other people, not only your own self. As we see in the surah of Yasin. Yes, yes. Yeah, thinking this needs what, brother? You said a story about this man. Thinking needs what? what? Needs 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 yes. Yeah, to think and to care about others, something. Okay. Yes, as this uh, moment, he said, even after death, he said that, uh, that this my people, they should know that Allah has pardoned me and let me to enter paradise. Yes. So, and even after death, he was sincere. Allah is the Allah. This is a very uh, good point. Jazakallah khairan. To love others, to uh, work for others, care for us. to care for others. Yeah, because actually nowadays, yani, everyone just selfish. care about yeah, very selfish. <laughs> Not you, of course. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa taala guide all of us. But I am speaking about the majority of people. They are just thinking about themselves. If you come a friend with you, first question: uh, What's your work? Why? What's your work? <laughs> he want to make a business with you in the end. Uh, I don't care who are you, but what is your work? Uh, you are dealing with. Uh, any business? Okay. I have another company. We can work together. Something. Okay. So everyone now thinking about himself. Okay. We are, as a Muslim, we should think about others also. Okay. 
you know, uh, the Sahaba, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the direction of the Qibla, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ Some of those, the ayah, the ayah means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, said, answer for the Sahaba when they asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how about the people, previous people, and the, not only them, about the Sahaba, they already, they were praying already towards Al-Aqsa, and they passed away. They are caring about the dead people also. Not only about the, uh, the, 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 the friends, the, the life. So this is a condition of the Sahaba and the good believer to have to care about others. What else? Okay, Sheikh Muhammad, while he's speaking about Sheikh Abdullah, Abdullah Sah, he said, this Sheikh, this scholar, move from that place to that place, place and to teach. Teach what? Islam. Islam. Iman. Teach Islam and Iman. Mm. So we should have knowledge. 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 Without knowledge, mm. you have not, you, you, nothing. You will not do anything. So you, you, I, I'm not saying you have to be a great scholar like those. No, but you, have, you, must, be a, you must have a knowledge. Mm. So because without knowledge, you will not do anything. You will not be able to do anything. Yes, you have Iman, but it's staying in the masjid, just praying. And yeah, I'm not saying this is bad, but you will not change. <coughs> You need some knowledge to change, okay? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So, Iman... Okay. So, we move to another step. So, Sheikh Muhammad will explain now. Some very strong Iman. Okay. Sincerity. Yes. Sincerity. Knowledge. الصبر حلو الصبر caring about others okay now everyone we are going to make teams I want Yusuf Salman Burak one team and you take only one other choose one other which one you choose? I am not in any team. Okay. 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 Team A, okay? Team B, Riza, Dr. Hashim, Ayman, choose another one. Choose one. But now, now we are not talking. So, every team, let us know their point of view. Could you catch my point? Clear? What are the strong points? Can you repeat again? For any one of us living in Japan here to service. Did you catch my point? Yes. Yes. The positive things, the power. The positive things, power. And, uh, charity. Uh, and uh, what that's easy to uh, make down. And they are not easily, they are not... Uh, flexible, flexible. Yeah, flexible. And okay. uh, they are liberal to listen. They like to listen.